ninjutsu as perceived by the world today is an art that trained their members in warfare, mastering weapons, unarmed combat techniques, guerrilla warfare, and espionage. They were considered the master spies of their time. Ninjutsu was created in Japan about 1100 years ago, and true, they were hired by reigning warlords as spies and assassins, but this was only necessary for survival, to protect themselves and their leaders, much as today, our modern armies train men to protect their countries and families. Japanese Grandmaster Masaaki Hatsumi is a descendant of the ninja tradition and recognized leader of this art today. Dr. Hatsumi trains his members not to seek confrontation, but to enhance their mental and physical health through ninjutsu training, to live a life of honor and respect, obeying the laws of man and nature. One of his leading disciples and certified instructor of ninjutsu is Jack Hoban. Hi everybody, my name is Jack Hoban. Welcome to Ninja Volume 2. Uh, today we're going to be talking about three main uh, principles of ninjutsu. One is the ground hitting, the rolling, uh, sometime, sometimes called ukemi or injury, injury prevention. The second one is tai sabaki or walking, moving uh, within the fight. And the third one is kind of a combination of both of them. Tai henjutsu is the Japanese word for it and it's uh, escaping from danger. So rolling, moving, leaping, getting away from uh, a dangerous situation. Th those are the things that we're going to be covering today on this video. I appreciate you coming and, uh, and working with us today on this. I have two assistant instructors that are going to be helping me today. Ken Lux and Mickey Fujitsubo. And uh, Mickey and Ken are both uh, high-ranking instructors in the Bujinkan. And uh, we're going to get started with the rolling and just talking about how a ninja uh, learns how to roll and hit the ground. Now, the main thing that you have to remember in this part of the training is that uh, we're not talking about sport rolling or gymnastics here. We're talking about if I was on the ground or fighting on the ground or hit the ground during a fight or, wanting to, or wanted to use the ground in a fight, how would I do that safely without injuring myself when I hit the ground? And it's quite a bit different than trying to make something look good or even the kind of role that you might get used to if you uh, used a mat quite a bit. Um, we're using today, as you saw from some of the shots outside, we're using uh, good old mother nature, the ground for our mat. And here today we have quite a, a hard floor with just a thin layer of, um, of a rug on top of it. So just to give you an idea of you know, how carefully we're, uh, we're uh, working on the fundamentals and the principles here so that we don't get hurt ourselves when we're training. So that's the uh, theme for today. Again, welcome, and we're going to get started right now. We're going to start with the basic front roll. Now, this is Mickey Fujitsubo, as I, I had warned you, he was going to help me in this video today. And uh, Mickey is quite good at this kind of ukemi. So uh, before we start to explain it, let's just see what it looks like. Mickey, would you do a front roll for us? Okay, so as you can see, he did that quite successfully and came up, uh, looked like he was ready to, uh, to engage the attacker or the opponent. He was, he was ready to go when he was finished. The most important things about this role is, as he starts, he gets very low to the ground. See how he uses his knees. Okay, so clearly, when you're trying to hit the ground, the smallest fall that you can accomplish is going to hurt the least. Okay, rather than falling from trying to roll from standing straight up, he goes all the way to the ground first and tries to get as low as he can before he rolls. The next thing he's going to do to make sure that his shoulder doesn't hit the ground is he's going to look at the ceiling. He starts to look at the ceiling, and you see how that kind of brings his shoulders around so that his shoulder doesn't hit the ground. He doesn't smack into the ground with his shoulder. We call that ninja shoulder, and that's from looking at the ground, and you don't want to do that. So he looks at the ceiling, and that brings his shoulder around so that when he begins to roll, he lands in a safe spot on, the on his back, and he doesn't injure himself, okay? So uh, let, me, let me try one. 
the two things that we want to remember in this roll is, one, bend your knees when you roll. You don't want to be rolling from way up here. And two, as you go down, it's a little anti-intuitive. You want to look at that ground, but try not to look at the ground. Try to look at the ceiling. Looking at the ceiling brings your body around, so the part that you want to hit back here naturally hits the ground. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, I exaggerated that a little bit, but I wanted you to see me bend my knees as I start to roll, and I wanted you to see me twist my spine and look at the ceiling as I finish my roll so I didn't land on my shoulder and injure my shoulder. And that's the front roll. The second roll is the back roll, and I'm going to ask Mickey to demonstrate this a couple of different ways, front and back, so you can see it. Mickey, try the, try the back roll. All right, now if you just turn around right from where you are and uh, do it again. Okay, uh, that, was, that was really good. The thing that, you, if you notice, he again, he got real close to the ground and he rolls sideways from the hip, kind of diagonally over to the shoulder. And what that does, it distributes the, uh, the stress of hitting the ground and rolling over the longest possible distance you know, the, the hypotenuse of the triangle, if you will. And that's really important because anything involved with hitting the ground is traumatic. And you want to spread out the, uh, uh, that force as, as much as you can over a large distance as you can, and that's that uh, diagonal, okay? And so the first thing that happens here, we're go as we go to fall, even if we're being pushed back, instead of letting our ourselves get top heavy, we want to try to let ourselves get bottom heavy and reach out with our butt, go down, get as low as we can, as low as we can. Use the spine to kind of draw your body in, pull it over, nice, small circle. So that's the, uh, that's the, the uh, back roll, kind of volume one. We have another version of that too. Mickey, can you do the second version, kind of the leg out version? You can see. That's a little bit different. Can you turn around and do it again? It's going straight down again, but one leg is kind of going out. And that can be used as a kick or just as a balancing point. There's many uses for that. So the, the important point when you're learning this and when you're training is don't let yourself bend over to waist and lose the uh, natural alignment of your body. You've got to kind of have strong knees and strong ankles, strong thighs to do this. But you want to be able to go straight down. Roll just like that, keeping your body as straight as possible so that you go straight down and you can land on you know, the soft parts here. Control the fall with your legs and don't uh, land on your backbone or your coccyx here where you could injure yourself. You want to stay away from that kind of thing. Actually, it's better to train with somebody until you're strong enough to do this than to do it incorrectly. And here's how we do. Uh, here's how we train together when we're trying to learn this kind of role in the beginning. If Mickey does this, I'm going to stick out my finger. He holds on and he kind of uses me to steady himself as he rolls so that he can keep his back straight and keep his natural alignment of his spine here. He doesn't bend over and fall down this way. That's what we're trying to avoid. So it makes sense to, uh, you know, work with a buddy and, you know, let him use your finger to steady himself or even to go against the wall and put your hand against the wall keep that back straight as you go down that's important don't don't let yourself kind of break the the natural alignment of your spine that's important thing about this back roll okay the next roll is the side roll now we have two or three versions of this too and uh, they're all important. You should try to practice all of them. The first one is just a basic side roll. Maybe rolling out of the picture a little bit. But that's fine. OK. Did everybody get that? Again, the, the, the important part of this, see if you can make it a little bit tighter, Mick. <clears throat> Again, the important part of this is he gets nice and low and nice and compact. He's looking right into the camera, right at the enemy uh, or the opponent when he's finished. See that? His eyeballs are right on you. That's really important. 
Keep your eyes right on the person. Okay? Can you do the Yoko uh, Nagare too? The kind of sideways roll with the leg. And this is similar. Oops. Okay, we're going to try that again. Do it one more time. All right. Take your time. Okay. And that's the Yoko Nagare. Did, did, uh, did you see again how he's paying attention to his opponent? He's trying to keep his back straight when he goes down. He comes up in a ready position. He's aware of what he's doing. Again, with this Yoko Nagare, you've got to make sure that you don't lose your natural body alignment. When you go down, you want to go straight down. I'm keeping my eye uh, on my opponent so that when I come up, I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to fight. Uh, you can do it l like we just did with the left leg in front or the right leg in front. You can also do this uh, with the leg going to the rear. So maybe this would be the third version of the side roll. And this time when I go down, instead of putting my leg in the front, like I just did, I can put it in the rear. You can see how I sat down this way. And again, the roll is uh, a nice side roll. Again, using my spine uh, to help me lower myself straight down to the ground. And like we said before, if you're having trouble with this, your knees aren't strong enough, you find yourself wobbling here, get a buddy, hold a finger, or put your hands up against a wall or a tree, because the important part is being able to keep 